Hello everyone, it is me, Marina Martinez-Bateman. I am the CEO of New Coyote Consulting. We are an equity and communications consulting firm here in the Pacific Northwest. It is actually the Wednesday update and I took Monday after Memorial Day. We were closed Monday after Memorial Day and then I took Tuesday off just for some like rest and relaxation. We had a really good week last week and um you know, I said I was worried about money lately and I've been, you know, things have been tight and it's very obviously turning around now. Um, other friends of mine who are independent contractors and who are owning their own businesses have mentioned that things are sort of like picking up about two months after they usually pick up. And I was hearing them say that and then just didn't notice. <laughs> For myself um, that things really started to pick up about two months after usually pick up you know so usually we've got things picking up in the um, you know beginning of April for us things are gonna start to pick up in the beginning of June this year so that's been really heartening also I knew a while ago that some of these client relationships that I ended at the beginning of the year needed to end um, and I just hung on to them because they don't like change, because they don't like ending things, because they don't, um, I, I, like, this is not really what's actually my story is, but because I feel like people have rejected me a lot in the world or that I've been sort of like abandoned in the world or that I've been... I don't know, um, unwelcome in places because of who I am. Not necessarily because of my actions, but just because of like how I grew up, where I grew up, my identities, my family's identities, etc. I find that when I realize it's time to end a relationship, that can be really hard for me to do. Because I grew up with the narrative that people either ended relationships with me or just failed to start them for petty reasons, which some of that is true. Um, I find it really hard to end relationships with someone even when I know, like this relationship cannot thrive. Like we have to be over. And that includes business relationships and work relationships. And because I see, um, you know, I, I have this like, original tape of me being someone who people sort of like uh you know judged harshly um I don't want to judge people too harshly right but after years and years and years of being in business for myself having clients having client relationships at this point I have an instinct I know when a relationship is over and last year, uh, I came to that point with every single client that I fired this year. And instead of at that point last year being like, yep, it's over, got to do the thing, I didn't. And that caused us a lot more stress and worry and bother then it needed to and honestly it made recruiting new clients really hard for us because we were struggling with these bad fit clients that for both of our health we should have separated a long time ago but we were just still sort of like trying to make it work in a world where how do I phrase this because resolving conflicts that's amazing Coming to, you know, a justice-centered solution. Amazing. Figuring out how to get through trivial issues that are not values-based, right? They're not, they're not deep principles that were in conflict. That is a great thing to know how to do. It's something that I happen to know how to do. It's something that I really respect in other people who know how to do it. It's wonderful. And also, if we have a fundamental misalignment of values, um, even if we say on the surface that our values are the same or very similar, 
if there is a fundamental misalignment in how we enact those values in the world, we have to part ways. We cannot stay in a relationship with people for whom being in that relationship is a violation of our values. Either this person or us, whichever one, right? And if I had, if I had ended those client relationships when they were time, when it was time to end them, it would have been a little bit more stress and a little bit more strife at the time. And also it would have made everything so much easier. Like I'm such a big proponent of like what is for me will find me. And part of that understanding of the world understanding that if I'm just who I am in the world other people will see that and notice that and be attracted to that that if I if I want that part the people coming towards me the me coming towards other people right the mutual attraction of our just like authentic expression I also have to be fully grounded in understanding that when I figure out that someone is not for me what is not meant for me I have to let that go. And it is hard in our world of artificial scarcity to let things go. It is very difficult, especially when it's easy to justify yourself. No, 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 no. We have the same values. Look at their value statement. Look at my value statement. They're the same. It's it's so easy to look at that and and, and talk yourself into staying in a place that you don't belong anymore. Maybe that you never even belonged in the first place. Um, I know a lot of us are experiencing still a lot of loss, a lot of slowing, a lot of stoppage. Um, that means, that ding means I have to go. Um, and also, you can take yourself by the hand and say, let's get, let's let go of some of this. We don't have to let go of everything that's not meant for us. That might feel like a lot, but let's let go of some of this. Let's let go of a little bit, 10%, 15% of the things that aren't meant for us. Let's just let go of those things and let's see what happens when we do, when we intentionally look at something. It doesn't even have to be a relationship. It can be fucking furniture and say, this is not meant for me. I have something that is meant for me. I'm going to let this go so that that thing can come back into my life so that that thing can, can find me. You know, if I have a table full of people I don't want to eat with, the people I do want to eat with are going to think that I'm not, that I've got a full table. I don't have time for them. Right. Um, that's a weird metaphor, but I, it, I don't know. I'm going to run with it. <laughs> You have to be able to pay, create a space, create a, create a seat that someone can see and you can say, welcome, welcome in, come in, come over here. Like, sit with me. This is what I'm doing. Like, and if you don't have that space for them, they're never going to know that that's where you, that you want them there instead of the person or thing that's occupying that space, right? We have to be clear about what we want. And part of being clear about what we want is being clear about what we don't want. Anyway. Have a lunch, have a walk, have a weekend. Don't work for free. I will see you next week.